Hey everyone, it's Friday, May 7th. The time right now is 1.04 p.m. and the temperature is 8 degrees Celsius. That was Broadview Avenue I was standing in front of. And this here is Riverdale Park East. And there's some people enjoying the now forbidden sport of tennis. And there's a look back towards Broadview. And the plan for this one is to head south down Broadview until I get to Girard Street. And then I'll explore a rather interesting residential street called Hamilton. And that features a rather unique skinny house. We'll take a look at that. And then I'll head down to Queen Street. And there's a look west towards that famous downtown skyline view. If you watch my live streams, you'll know that this is one of my favorite spots to end up at the end of a long stream. It's a nice place to relax. And it's close proximity to Greek Town and East Chinatown means there's no shortage of good food options around here. And this house that's being renovated has had some interesting art go up around it. That's kind of a nice touch. And there's a look at the north end of the downtown skyline. That would be St. Jamestown and Yorkville just behind it. Those white apartment buildings would be St. Jamestown. I did a walk through there a few days ago. This is definitely one of the nicest views of the skyline you can take in. And that is the Don Valley Parkway, just beyond Riverdale Park East. And on the other side is Riverdale Park West. And that would be the Cabbage Town neighborhood. And these green poles here have been here for as long as I can remember. I'm not sure what purpose they serve. Maybe someone can fill us in in the comments as to why they're here. And just to the north of here, at Danforth Avenue is Broadview Subway Station. And from here you could grab either the King or Dundas Streetcar.
There's some local history on that notice there. There's Rooster Coffee. Every time I walk by in a live stream, someone always points that place out. It seems to be well liked. And I think this is an access road. It looks like they're doing some type of grading work or other construction down at the bottom of the hill. That would provide a better answer as to what that's all about. And there is a 505 Dundas streetcar heading up to Broadview Station. So if you're heading south from Broadview, if you're not going any further south than Dundas, you can grab either of the streetcars. The problem being, if there's two streetcars there, one King and one Dundas, to my knowledge, there's no way to know which streetcar will depart first. The Rocketman app doesn't seem to work at that location and the notice board that tells you the time of departures has not been functioning for quite a while. Hello. Hi. Sorry, I felt a little weird talking to myself. <laughs> Hello. She was kind of looking at me, so I kind of stopped talking a bit and it turns out she recognized me. That's cool. So we're here in Riverdale Park East. And there's Riverdale Park West. As I was saying, the sign that tells you when the streetcars are departing at Broadview Station has not been functioning for quite a while. And on the right is Bridgepoint Family Healthcare. And that used to be the site of Riverdale Hospital. That was an old hospital built back in the 60s. And it had a rather funky half shirt a circle shape. I don't know why I said circle, but it looked like half a donut. And that was torn down. I'm not sure exactly when. And the new facility was built. And they've incorporated the old Don Jail there into the new hospital. That's now an administrative building for the hospital. I think this is less than 10 years old. And we are briefly entering East Chinatown right now. There's a look in at the old Don Jail. 
Maybe I'll just head in for a closer look. And this site has been home to a prison since 1864. And it was used to hold inmates up until 2013. And the street I'm on is called Jack Layton Way. I was not aware of that. And back when executions were a thing, they used to do hangings at this prison. And it looks like it's been physically connected to the newer hospital building. And this here is Hubbard Park. And it was named after a gentleman who was the first black elected official in the city. He also went on to serve as mayor. I was looking for a plaque with some more information on it. I think his name was Glenn, but I don't want to <laughs> get that wrong. This is the old gatehouse for the Don Jail. And according to this, it was built in 1865. And there's a look west along Girard. So we are just west of downtown, just on the other side of the Don River. You'll be into downtown. And straight ahead, if you were to continue east on Girard, you'll enter East Chinatown. East Chinatown also goes north a little bit on Broadview and south down to about Dundas, or a little bit short of there. She asked me, like, do you... There's the Riverdale Library. And this is an old governor's house, and that goes back to 1888. So what I want to do here is cross over to the other side and head south down Hamilton Street. So I'll just cross here at the main intersection. There's a look south down Broadview into Chinatown. And here is the city's first traditional Chinese archway. And this was installed back in 2009. 
And here we go, Hamilton Street. So I'll follow this south down to where it ends and then I'll find my way over to Queen Street. And this street features a number of older Victorian brick style homes. And it's one I've been meaning to capture for a while. There's a rather narrow, what looks to be a three or four story house. A lot of these homes are quite old, but there is a very unique, rather narrow house just up ahead at 154. And this is Mount Stephen Street. So a lot of these homes are quite reminiscent of Cabbage Town. I would imagine some of them would have heritage status. This old cottage style home most certainly does. You see a fair number of old workers cottages that look like that. But the really unique home is coming up just here on the right. And it is not one you can see on Google Street View, much like the smallest house in the city that's been obscured on Street View, so is this one. There it is, 154 Hamilton. That's a four-story house. The lot is only 16 feet wide. I think it's 1,300 square feet in total. And it used to be where a rather small garage was located, but someone bought the property and decided to put this up. I think they bought the land for five mil or 500,000. And this one was up for sale a few years ago for 3 million. And I saw it listed for 2 million five months ago. So I'm not sure if it's been sold or not, but it appears to be occupied by someone. There you go, one of the more unique homes in the city on a street that is full of unique homes. And this here is Dundas Street.
Bike Share Toronto. I just saw that they're trying to get approval to have a new membership level where instead of being limited to 30 minutes at a time, you could take a bike out for 45 minutes. That service is really meant for commuting and going point A to point B rather than leisurely taking a bike out. That's why there's those limitations on how long you can have a bike for. And here is Monroe Street. I'll cross south once the lights allow me to and we'll continue down Hamilton Street. It's quite a contrast between Hamilton and Monroe. These look mostly new. It might have been a better idea to go to the intersection of Broadview and Dundas to cross. Here we go. So now I'm traveling east along the south side of Dundas Street East. And it's back to Hamilton Street. And these homes here definitely look to be from a different era than the ones just to the south of it. And I found a listing online for this place, 109 Hamilton. And that was listed for 1 million. I don't know anything more about it. But I did find a listing for 35 Hamilton just to the south of here for 2 million. Although that was listed as a 3,000 square foot property. So we'll take a look when I get there. There's one of the take a book, leave a book, local free libraries that have popped up. I seem to notice them more on the east side. There's a really old looking home.
there's a for sale sign. That must be 35 Hamilton. So that on the right side is 2 million Canadian dollars. And I know I said I was going to head south all the way down to Queen Street, but I saw a park just around the corner here. And this walk's gone by rather quickly, so I figure we'll go check that out. I've been meaning to cover Hamilton Street for quite a while. Okay, that was interesting. My camera had just stopped recording. I don't know exactly where it stopped. But I just looked down at the screen and it was off and then it kind of rebooted and turned itself back on and started recording right away. So I had just left Hamilton Street and gone around the corner. I'm making my way down here on Matilda Street as I wanted to cut through this park. This is Joel Weeks Park. There's some people out enjoying the playground. I think that's supposed to be a beaver. Oh, a seaplane. Much like tennis and golf, I don't think basketball is supposed to be allowed right now, but fortunately the city has kept their facilities open. <laughs> That's kind of neat. We're all looking up at a giant acorn. And that is Queen Street East, just to the south of here. And this building here is something I've tried to look up before. I really couldn't find any information on it. I thought there might be some history with it. But it turns out it's an office building that goes back to the mid 1940s. Didn't seem to have any notable tenants in its history. And here is an on ramp to Don Valley Parkway, or the Don Valley Parkway. Here's a look you don't get too often. Looking right down at the DVP, 
sometimes referred to as the Don Valley parking lot. That is the Don River just on the other side and downtown Toronto. And there's a look up at the Queen Street Viaduct. And there's a look east along Queen Street. That would be into the Riverside neighborhood. <laughs> 